Hey y'all. So let's pick back up into Romans chapter 15. Now, the bubbling over, which we talked about yesterday, and the hope that we bring other people by the hope and the joy and the peace that we carry out in our everyday lives. Listen to Paul's words in Romans chapter 15. And a little bit of background about the book of Romans, if you're unfamiliar with it, you know, the message after Jesus or the message of the new covenant, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ was very, very different than anything that had ever been previously. Under the Old Covenant, right, the Old Testament, there were, was law and there were rules and there were do's and don'ts and only the Hebrews, the Jewish people, could be favored by God. They were God's people. Well, the rest of us were heathens <laughs> and that's just the way it was. But after Jesus, he broke all of the distinctions. The word tells us that now there is neither Jew nor Greek. And all of that had been broken or fulfilled, opened by Jesus Christ. And so Paul bringing and preaching the message of Jesus to the Gentile nation. And of course, he being a Jew and in his um, in one of his letters, he says, you know, I was a principal Jew. I was the best from the tribe of Benjamin and kept all of the rules. I knew all of the law. And so when he began to preach the message of Jesus, particularly to the Gentiles, the Jewish people were not receptive to that. Number one, it was against everything that they had been taught and raised in their tradition and culture. Um, and it, it had to be a little bit confusing. So how does the law and grace work? Well, they don't work together where the, if it's by the law, then it's not by grace. And if it's by the grace, then it's not by our own efforts in the law. So in the book of Romans, Paul um, talks about the differences between the law and grace, the old covenant and the new covenant, and how Jesus fulfilled one and now has given us um, this new wonderful covenant of grace. And so he's, this, this book is primarily written to a Jewish audience, those who were trying to figure out this whole new gospel, this whole new good news. And so Romans has 16 chapters, and the verse that we are digging into is in chapter 15. So this is towards the end of his letter to the Romans. And uh, where do I want to... um. Let's go, let's just start in verse 7. So this is 15, verse 7. Welcome and receive to your hearts one another, then even as Christ has welcomed and received you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ the Messiah became a servant and a minister to the circumcised to the Jews in order to show God's truthfulness and honesty by confirming and verifying the promises given to our fathers. And also, in order that the Gentile nations might glorify God for his mercy, not covenanted to them, as it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. Again, it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, along with his own people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the peoples praise him. And further, Isaiah says, there shall be a sprout from the root of Jesse, he who rises to rule over the Gentiles, and in him shall the Gentiles hope. And then is our verse, may the God of your hope so fill you with joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that the pow that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound and be overflowing, bubbling over with hope. Now, I don't know if you remember or not, but I hope you do. Over Christmas, we talked about the hope for the Gentiles, that Jesus came and he 
in him. We read so much in Isaiah that was prophesied in that in him, Gentiles would find hope. We who had been estranged from God, could not have any relationship with God, would find hope. We could have hope because of Jesus. And that is exactly what this says, that when the Jews embrace Jesus and they are so full and overflowing with um what God has done for them through the Messiah it says and further Isaiah says there shall be a sprout from the root of Jesse who rule, rises to rule over the Gentiles and in him may the Gentiles hope I just love how God weaves all of those threads together from our Christmas into now into tying a big bow on this uh, the hope of promise but it's that bubbling over it's that the God of our hope would so fill us with joy and peace in believing or in the experience of our faith that we would be full to the overflowing. We'll pick up here tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye, y'all.